All right, guys. So <laughs> Nike CEO John Donahoe got called out directly to his face on CNBC by the host when talking about China. Now, remember, guys, uh, just a, a few months ago on an earnings call, right? Uh, <laughs> China said, oh, I meant Nike, right? Sometimes it's, it, I get them mixed up because <laughs> they're basically the same. But it kind of gets to my point. <laughs> Nike said uh, they're a uh, brand of China for China, right? And to me, that sounds like they're a Chinese company, right? A Chinese company first. Now, um, the host at uh, CNBC here actually called out, again, the CEO directly to his face. And I want you guys to see him kind of squirm to answer this question. Take a look. We participate in sport all over the world, including China. China is a very important market for us. We have a long-term history in China. You know, Phil, Phil Knight, our, our founder, was in China 40 years ago, beginning to build what's now an incredible consumer connection that Chinese consumers have with Nike, with Jordan, with Converse. And so we continue to invest in China. We have over 7,000 monobrand stores in China through our Chinese partners. We're the number one sports brand on Tmall, have been for the last decade, still are today. And so we take a very long-term well, view in China. We're continuing to invest in China, and we'll continue to invest in China while also operating a very responsible global supply chain. Well, you told an analyst on the conference call last quarter that you are a brand. You said we are a brand of China and for China, which got a lot of attention given the attention from the U.S. and around the world on the human rights issues, the, the brutal clampdown on Hong Kong, questions about where COVID-19 came from. Do you, do you feel like you have to sacrifice your values at all as a company to do business there and to continue to grow and, and continue those deep roots that you talked about Nike has there? Not at all, Sarah. We, we, we connect to consumers in markets all over the world. And so I could say go into any country around the world and say consumers in that market consider Nike a brand of their market for them. And that's one of the, one of the reasons Nike's been so globally successful. And we operate very aligned with our values, always have been, always will, including throughout our entire supply chain. And so this is simply part of the, the challenges of operating a global brand in global markets. And we've done, navigated that very well for 50 years, and we will continue to do that. Oh, my God. This guy just gave the most, like, politician answer I've ever seen in my life when called out to his face about comments that he made about how... You know, Nike is a brand of China and for China. Okay. Called out to his face. And basically he, he doubled down and says, well, technically what, what I really mean is that uh, the people of China like Nike, right? They, they like our brand. So therefore any country's people who likes our brand, we're, we're a brand for of them and for them. That's essentially what he's saying, right? I mean, at this point, he might as well change his name from John Donahoe to John China Ho. <laughs> I mean, might as well. That's a better description of his relationship with China, in my opinion, okay? And it's funny because he also said, well, we're not sacrificing our values. Okay, so what are your values then, right? Are your values communism, okay? Your values of forced labor, right? Sweatshops, okay? Uh, is your values uh, censorship, right? <laughs> Like, um, do you approve of China threatening to nuke Japan if Japan interferes fears with them trying to take over the democratic uh, country of Taiwan? Right. Is, is that what Nike values are? Because if those are your values, th those values are not necessarily in line with um, the U.S. Right. <laughs> They're not in line with the U.S. OK. And American values of freedom and democracy and capitalism. They're not. So you can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. But what this guy sees is he sees the fact that, well, China has 1.4 billion people, okay, and a growing economy. That's what he sees. He sees the dollar signs. He sees the dollar signs, right? Because, you know, <laughs> you want to talk about cancel, cancel culture. China has serious cancel culture, right? That, that's why the people that come over here, right, from North Korea and, and China, they, they talk about how cancel culture in the United States, it, it, it feels a lot like communism, 
Because if you guys remember earlier this year, uh, around March, um, Nike came under fire in China because Nike basically said that, hey, you know, we don't really approve of what's going on with the Uyghurs. Um, I guess I that's how you pronounce those people. But in, in that region, um, there's cotton source from there, right? And they're saying, well, we don't get our cotton from there. We don't approve of, you know, using materials from that, that region, right? Basically hinting at the allegations of concentration camps, right, in that region and the human rights violations that are happening to those people. Again, this is all alleged, okay? China denies it. They say it's not happening. And because of that, on China's social media uh, version of Twitter, they essentially eviscerated Nike, all right? You had Chinese celebrities um, drop their endorsements from Nike, right? Disconnect their relationship from Nike. So they face major, major, major pushback when they said that, right? H&M was also a part of that. They basically started taking down their advertisements. People stopped shopping there. Like, if you criticize the Chinese government, you will face the consequences, right? And that, in my opinion, is why they came out, the CEO came out and basically reinforced Nike's relationship with China. When he said, we are a brand of China and for China. Because he's basically saying, hey, I know we made some comments that was out of line a few months ago. But let me, let me reassure you. We want the you on. <laughs> okay? We want your business. We want your money. We want the paper. We're all about the paper. And I wish that these companies would just say that. Look, I'm a capitalist. I don't have a problem with capitalism. Now, I don't endorse, you know, concentration camps. Okay? And slave labor, obviously. But I'm a capitalist. I have no problem with companies trying to make money. But what I do have a problem with is these companies and their fake woke values. Because you cannot be pro-Black Lives Matter here in the U.S., but yet do business in China. The same exact country that uh, does not necessarily treat black people over there <laughs> slash Africans over there uh, well. Okay, they, they do blackface. Uh, they was forcing Africans out of their homes at the beginning of the pandemic over there, right? Blaming them for it, okay? It, McDonald's had to apologize because they weren't allowing black people into the restaurant in China, right? I mean, again, there's allegations of rampant racism over there in China, but I thought black lives matter. Apparently, they only matter in the U.S. to Nike, Apparently only out in the U.S. because, again, it's not like black people are treated like first-class citizens in China, right? I just want some consistency. It doesn't work that way. You can't sit here and talk about all the social injustices and equality and equity and all that stuff in the United States and try to lecture us about our wrongdoings. But yet, you're doing business in a country that literally does not even believe in freedom of speech. They don't even believe in your ability to call out their government for wrongdoings, okay? They don't even believe in your ability to do that. So you, you, you can't have both. And it's just easy if you just say, look, we're just trying to make money. Okay? We're trying to make money. And we're going to say whatever we need to say to make money. That's essentially what he's saying without actually saying it. Everybody knows it. I just wish they would stop being so fake about it. That's my problem with these companies. They want to be political, okay, when it benefits them. And they want to act like, oh, we living up to this standard. We're going to lecture you guys on what's the right thing to do. And how to be a stand-up citizen right while at the same time doing business with human rights abusers one of the worst human rights abusers on the planet if not the biggest one they will happily lay in bed with that country purely to make money purely to make money and then they go up here and want to tell me, well we haven't compromised our values <laughs> it's a joke and he might be right because you never had values in the first place You've never had values in the first place. What you say you're for, you just say that to make money. You say that to appear like you give a damn about all these social issues when you really don't. And I know you really don't. I know you really don't. And, and that's fine. That's okay. I don't care. I don't need companies to be woke. I don't need companies to take political stances. I just need them to leave me the hell alone and don't try to lecture me on how to be a good person. Okay? That's all I need you to do. Right. That's what I need these companies to do. So kudos to this journalist for asking tough questions and, and, and really trying to hammer him down on 
uh, Nike's relationship with China. You just don't see that enough in the mainstream media. But let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.